guys, it's Tom from Mobile Tech Talk and this is a video review of the HP Omen 15. Now, HP is not new to high-end gaming laptops and that doesn't change anything here with the Omen 15. The Omen 15 is one of those beautifully crafted machines that it, it totally justifies its price tag. So, I mean, I'm going to put B-roll in here so you can see this beautiful carbon fiber-esque lid with the, I don't want to say holographic, it's a shiny Omen logo on the back here. It does not light up, it just reflects the light around it. When you think of gaming laptops, do you think of those huge, like two inch thick machines that weigh like three and a half, four kilos, that break your back, that are like, like 17 inches? And this is not that. I mean, it does come in a 17 inch version. This is the uh, of course, being the Omen 15, this is the 15 inch version, but there is a 17. It's not too heavy at 2.2 kilos, and if I do it side on, it's not actually all that thick either. It's about 22 mil, which is pretty much perfect for a gaming-esque laptop. For me, as like I said, if you want to max out every game, at native res, this is not the machine for you. The AX011NA that I have here has 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, the quad core Intel Core i7-6700HQ, a 256GB NVMe M.2 PCIe SSD, a 1TB mechanical spinning hard drive, and a GeForce GTX 965M with 4 gigs of VRAM. Now all of that is wrapped up in a machine with a 4K screen. So, if you want to play things at native resolution, you better be playing games like Dota 2. Now, what I mean by that is, Ultra HD, or 4K as it's more colloquially known, is not easy to push. Um, static images, maybe, videos, not too bad, but when you're having to render entire games at that resolution, it does become very difficult. Not only that, 4K is really small, especially on a 15 inch screen. I have this set to 200% scaling, which instead of making this a 4K screen, just makes it a really, really sharp 1080p screen, and I love it. My problem is, I just don't really like 15 inch laptops. For me personally, I'd much rather have a 13 or an 11 inch laptop, uh, or best of both words, a 12 and a half inch laptop. 15 and 17 inch ones, for me, are just too big. But HP has done a pretty good job here. It's not as slim as the X360 I recently checked out and I'd probably say it's not as well built. There is a lot more plastic on the Omen 15 but there's only two ways I can describe the Omen 15 and that is one fingerprint magnet. As you can see I've probably cleaned this off about three times in this review so far and there are still umpteen amount of fingerprints on this thing. The second one is demonic. Now obviously with a name like Omen, HP is going for a very certain type of audience here and I really think they've managed to do it. So we have the glossy red Omen logo on the top here. I really love it. We've got Omen branding at the side. If we open up the laptop on the wrist rest there is Omen down the bottom. There is the now iconic HP and Bang & Olufsen uh, speaker grill, which is uh, triangular. It looks very Deus Ex-ish. Yeah, there's no real way. Oh, and the keyboard backlighting is red. Because obviously, you got to do something evil. Go for red. HP have really, like, hit the nail on the head with this. I just... It's little things. Like, the carbon fibre pattern on this lid. I can't tell if this is actual carbon fibre or if this is plastic painted like carbon fibre because there is a lot of give in this screen. There is also a lot of give in the keyboard deck. Um, now the keyboard deck being mushy wouldn't be as bad if the keys themselves weren't so mushy so you're already having to press extra hard when you're typing and then that just looks worse when as you're typing harder the entire keyboard deck is flexing. But aside from that I there's very little wrong with the Omen 15. It is a beast of a machine. Now, the 965M is not the newest GPU from NVIDIA. That would be the 10 series part, so the 1060, 1070, and 1080. This is a 900 series part, which means it's going to be less powerful, it's going to be less power efficient, 
But for everything I did on here, which is playing a few games, not particularly heavy ones, I played Rocket League and I played Assassin's Creed 3. When done at 1080p with everything turned up, they were fine. They were hitting 45 to 50 FPS. No biggie for me. I, the more of the issue was me being terrible at video games. So I transferred to doing something that I'm actually quite good at, which is video editing and uh, video transcoding and rendering. And it actually worked way better than I thought. And for two reasons. One, CUDA. And two, QuickSync. So there are two programs I use, one of which is called Handbrake, which has recently gotten its 1.0 release after 13 years in beta. And the second is Make MKV. Now, using those two programs on my desktop computer used to take a while. On the Omen 15, on the other hand, because the i7-6700HQ has what's called a quick sync, which is a small video encoding and decoding block on the die itself, it's able to speed up certain parts of the video. And also, the 965M has CUDA cores. Now, if you don't know what CUDA cores are, each GPU is made up of a certain amount of cores. AMD calls them stream processors, and NVIDIA calls them CUDA cores. Now, they are still very different things, but as a, as a basic level, that's it. And you can code specifically for stream processors or CUDA cores. And CUDA acceleration in some programs is insane. Like, utterly insane. You can get like a 3x boost just from uh, either OpenGL or OpenCL rendering by moving to CUDA. And it's a shame it's not open, it's obviously only available on NVIDIA GPUs. But that doesn't change the fact that when I was using this to, I don't know, transcode, transcode, transcode a Blu-ray rip into an MP4 to put on my NAS, that it was 75% faster. There is no way around that, like, it is just faster. Also, watching games or media on this screen, like I said, it was beautiful. HP picked an amazing screen, like I said, it is a UHD, so it's 3840 by 2160 IPS panel with 178 degree both way viewing angles. It's glossy, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it is non-touch, which is good because it means you're less likely to be putting finger oils all over the screen, which is a big bonus. Another thing I'm not a big fan of that is not here, which is a good thing. It's not a convertible. The Omen 15 is a laptop only. It only goes that far back. That, to me, is 100% fine. There is no reason for a gaming laptop to be a 2-in-1. There is not a reason for most laptops to be a 2-in-1. So, thank you HP for making that right. Lastly, I want to talk about battery life. So how is the battery life on the Omen 15? Well, actually, it sadly kind of sucks. So HP say you can get 10 and a half hours out of this. I, no. That there is, unless you have it on the lowest brightness, you're turned all wireless radios off and you're only watching a local media file, there is probably no way you're gonna get 10 and a half hours. If I was doing anything intensive, like playing games or doing video stuff, three and a half to four hours, maybe three if I was unlucky, maybe four and a half hours if I was lucky. And then if I was just doing light use, so like YouTube, browsing the web, writing some documents, seven to eight hours was much more likely. So battery life doesn't come anywhere near HP's claims. But one thing I can say that it does is the charging. Now this has what HP calls 90 in 90, which is 90% of its battery in 90 minutes. This holds up. And if it is not like actually 90% in 90 minutes, I don't care because it is so damn close that it doesn't really bother me. Originally, I was upset that this doesn't charge via USB type C, but there is a very good reason for that. Now USB-C and its uh, specification allows up to 100 watts which is a lot of power. 100 watts to be transferred over a single cable. The charger for the Urban 15 is 120 watts. So, whilst I still would have preferred a USB Type-C charger that charges slightly slower than this, just for the universal, universal compatibility reason, the fact that this actually does live up to the 1990 claim, unlike the X360, really does uh, make me have some sort of faith that HP is doing. Something's right. Last but not least, let's talk about I.O. Now, I.O. stands for input and output, and it's pretty... I can't believe we actually have to put I.O. In, lap, in laptop reviews nowadays, but because there are some laptops which are shrinking ever and ever more I.O., on the left-hand side, we have a Kensington micro-slot, a USB Type-A 2.0 port, 
and a USB Type A 3.0 port along with a combo headphone and microphone jack. On the right hand side we have the barrel jack power connector, a collapsible Ethernet RJ45 jack, a full size HDMI jack. I don't know if this is HDMI 1.4B or 2.0A, HP won't tell me, but I'd assume 1.4B just to be safe. Another Type C, no, another Type A 3.0 port, and lastly, a full size SD card slot. So I'd personally say there is enough IO here to, to satiate most people. Would I prefer it had a Type C port with Thunderbolt 3? Of course, because it means you could add something like the Razor Core in to expand. Maybe when the 965M is getting really long in the tooth, you could plug in a 1080 or uh, whatever the high-end AMD card running Vega is. I'm just going to call it the RX 490, whatever it is. So that would have been nice and HP currently do not have an external GPU solution unlike Dell with the Alienware amplifier so kind of what you get is what you're gonna have for the rest of the lifetime of the laptop but I'd say the IO here is fine we've got two USB 3's we've got a USB 2 and the USB 2 is pretty much only there at this point for compatibility reasons although we've had USB 3.0 for a while USB 2 is super old, which means it has one thing on its side, compatibility. USB 2.0 has the near universal compatibility that PS2 has, and that is useful for a lot of things. Sometimes you don't, you don't want to have to install certain drivers for something, you just want it to work, and USB 2 still just works for a lot of people. So, that was it. That was my review of the HP Omen 15. Let me know if you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, leave a comment down below t if you want to tell me anything on how I could improve this video and subscribe, please. Uh, tell your friends and there should be more videos like this in the future. If you want to get me anywhere, I'm at mobile underscore dom on all important social medias. So that's Instagram, that is Snapchat, that is Twitter, that is all the important social medias and you can find my work at www.mobiletechtalk.co.uk. Until next time, goodbye.